from around the globe, it's theCUBE, with digital coverage of AWS reInvent 2020, sponsored by Intel, AWS, and our community partners. Hello everyone, this is Dave Vellante, and welcome to theCUBE's wall-to-wall -wall coverage of AWS reInvent 2020, virtual reInvent, and our coverage over three weeks of the cloud. We're looking into the next decade of innovation, and with me are two great guests. Chris Weiborg is the Vice President of Product Marketing at Cohesity, and Sabina Joseph is the General Manager of America's Technology for Partners, AWS. Folks, thanks for coming on theCUBE. Great to see you. Great to be here, Dave. Thanks for having us. You're very welcome. Thank you, Dave. It's great to see you, Sabina. And uh, Chris, before we get into the partnership, I want to ask kind of what you've seen in the market, you know, with the increased focus on data, digital business, obviously the last nine months, people have really shifted their priorities. H how have you seen customers responding? Yeah, it's, it's actually, uh, you know, it's, it's sort of strange to say this at a time it's really hard for all of us dealing with the global pandemic, but um, the market has picked up in many ways. And perhaps that's not surprising uh, given a lot of folks have um, started to shift things to more virtual way of working and, uh, and the data hasn't slowed down. And, and so with that, um, we've also seen a little bit of a shift, and this is part of the reason behind the announcement we're making, of trying to accelerate for many organizations, projects that had originally been planned to put in a data center to moving more towards the cloud, right? Part of this is a, a CapEx to OpEx shift, but I think it also in some cases falls under this umbrella of digital transformation, right? Where they're trying to accelerate new ways of doing things, while in some cases people can't even get into data centers in some cases anymore. And, and so how can you do that more remotely? How can you go to a model to a little more uh, self-help? Uh, and, and all that leads up to part of what we're gonna be talking about today. So the, the market has been um, very busy because again, data growth hasn't slowed down. Uh, I, th I think the one thing that I'd add to that is you'd see uh, a, an uptick in, in terms of uh, focus and interest in some of the things that we do because of all the ransomware attacks that are out there. Mm -hmm. Right, right. That's, that's another, another piece of it. Yeah, and, and I, I want to get into the the announcement as well. But I mean, you're right, Chris. It's a it's a it's a, actually it's as tough as it is for the for the for the, the the climate. It's a good time to be in tech. It's even better if you're in cloud. So Sabina, I, you know, I wonder if you'd add. I think you must have a lot of people, you know, in the ecosystem, really wanting to work with you. Uh, we do. I think, I think with the proliferation of data, right, and data across many different silos, uh, I think the key is, you know, how do we provide customers more value for this data? Uh, that way they can make, make it optimal for their business. So yes, we do have a lot of different partners wanting to work with us. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So we're all busy. I feel like we, we, we've never worked so hard in our lives, but so Cohesity and AWS, you've announced a strategic collaboration. Tell me more about it. Why did you choose to collaborate together, you know, Chris, other than AWS is the you know, number one cloud platform. What were some of the other factors that we should be focused on? Yeah, I, I think, and Sabina, please do chime in here as well. I, I think, you know, the big portion of it, Dave, has to do with the shared vision that we have around really what we believe is the next chapter in, in data management. And so how do we make it simple for organizations to uh, not only uh, protect and secure and manage their data, but also get more value out of it um, and derive more value from that data, which is kind of what Sabina was hinting at. And a lot of the, the reasons that we think this is such a good match, given all the uh, varied services Amazon has that you can build off of, um, given what Cohesion does. Yeah, so Sabina, I, I know you're going to start with customers. You always interviewed enough Amazon Amazonians to know that's really the starting point, the prism from which you look. But so from that prism, from your perspective, What's the collaboration? Why the collaboration? What does it bring for customers? Yeah, so, you know, as, uh, as Chris was saying here, right, I think, I think there was a lot of alignment, both in terms of culture and working backwards from customers, customer obsession, right, and really kind of understand what, we, what can we do, right, to bring intel intelligent data management solution to enterprise and mid-sized customers, and provide simplicity, flexibility, and reduce total cost of ownership. And that's where, you know, Cohesity and AWS, we really shared that vision, I would say, over the last couple of years. Cohesity, of course, has been a partner of AWS for quite some time now. And then when we started to talk to each other, we understood that these were some of the things we wanted to not just address, but also provide an opportunity for customers. So that's why we 
collaborated in this unique way to bring forward a data management as a service solution for our customers. All right, Chris, I really want to dig into this a little bit more because I've talked to a number of, of CIOs that have said, boy, our, our, our business resilience strategy was way too focused on, on DR, maybe too much focus on, on backup. We're now a digital business because every business, so you're out of business if you're not a digital business overnight. Mm -hmm. and, yeah. and so this notion of data management and data management as a service, what, what problems are you really focused on, on solving there? Yeah, I, I, th I think two things, Dave. I mean, let's go back to what Cohesity is after uh, solving as, as a company. And that's this problem of what we call mass data fragmentation, right? Where you have data stored in many different locations, prem, cloud, edge, et cetera. Uh, typically in many different pieces of infrastructure. So there's a lot of silos going on there. And it's really hard to get your hands around uh, the entirety of what you have. And, and first of all, make sure it is protected uh, and there's some compliance implications to that and so on. And, and then also, again, how can you, you know, not only protect it, but do more with it and get better transparency and more value out of that data that today might be dark, right? Might be opaque um, because A, do you know where it is? And B, even if you, if you do, what more can you do with it, right? And, and so that, that's kind of the first problem we're setting out to solve. Um, and, and why, as we look at moving uh, to doing what we're doing with AWS, providing an alternate consumption option is also really important, we think. So, um, you know, some people have staff and skills to roll their own, to do it themselves. Um, and Cohesity will continue to support those customers, obviously, as we do today. But what we also want to provide is a new option for those that want to make that shift from CapEx to OpEx and more from a management of you know, their environment, uh, doing it themselves to having somebody else manage it for them and, and really reducing that cost and overhead associated with running your own data center effectively. And so bringing the value of what Cohesity does to the cloud is the second piece of that, where we want to make sure we carry that bigger vision along where we're not just doing one thing, uh, we're doing multiple things. And so data management in, in our sense is not just about backup, although that's the first thing you'll see. We're also going to tackle that DR problem you raised as well. If you look closely a couple weeks ago, we made an announcement around what we're doing with a product we call site continuity uh, on, in the on-prem world. Guess what? That's going to come real soon to AWS. Uh, and then beyond that, files and objects, test data management, and, and as we'll get to a little bit later, more. Uh, when we start leveraging the value and the power of some of the advanced services AWS has to bring to the table uh, for things like compliance and uh, and so on. Great, Th thank you for that. And so, Sabina, I mean, we're we run on AWS. You know, we're small, but still, we we go into the console and there's this this buffet of services, and we have a lot of options. So, so I wonder if you could talk about customer choice, your philosophy around that, why that's important how you're providing different deploy, deployment models. And the example I would use is, like, why, why is backup as a service not enough? Why do we need to go beyond that? Yeah, so um, first of all, thank you very much for being our customer. Welcome. Um, <laughs> and I think, um, I think it's the key behind this solution that Cohesity is building on top of AWS is to really provide one platform and one user interface, right? Yes, backup, backup as a service is the first deployment, is the first service that we will start with and we are starting with. But I think we all realize, right, that customers do many different things with their data. They do disaster recovery, they have file services, dev and test, and then the value add services, which we'll talk about in a bit, around analytics, compliance, machine learning, and so on. So those are all the different value add things we want to provide with, da with that data. In addition to, of course, backup as a service, disaster recovery as a service, file services, and so on. Well, uh, the backup service is comprehensive um, that we are launching with and provides a rich protection uh, across all of this data. But at the end of the day, um, it's, it's customer's choice whether they want to manage your own data and infrastructure, or at Cohesity kind of manage this across the infrastructure for them, both in a hybrid model and in a cloud model. And we have many customers kind of wanting to look at both options because they have both environments. 
I don't know, Chris, if you want to talk about Dolby a little bit, but I can certainly get into it. I don't know if you want to delve a little bit into Dolby and how they're using it. Yeah, uh, that's a great example, actually, Sabina. So so I think, uh, Dave, as, as Sabina is suggesting, um, we, one of our early design partners on this was, was Dolby. And they're an existing Cohesity customer today. They're very happy with what they're doing on-prem. And so I asked him, well, why, why would you be interested in managing data also in the cloud? And his answer was, well, look, for me, it's really all about the self-help option. I have a lot of clients. I, I do essential IT, but I have a lot of clients in my organization that I want to point to to you know, do their own thing and, and not have to directly manage them. This is going to be the perfect option for them, right? They can just go sign up, connect, and protect to get started, all right? Step one. Um, I talked to another customer who, who commented, well, in, in this sort of hybrid configuration that Sabina suggests, the stuff that they have on-prem today, they'll probably protect on-prem, but workloads like, uh, let's say, Microsoft 365 mailboxes or something like that, it's in the cloud. Why would they backhaul that into their data center? Why not just protect it there in the cloud itself? Mm -hmm. It just seems to make sense. And, and then we also have you know, customers we're talking to that there are large distributed organizations where maybe uh, the stuff that's in the branch office, the remote office, they want to back up to the cloud because of WAN backhaul costs and so on. It's easier to do it that way. Uh, and then the central stuff is still central. So we're going to give, as Sabina said, customers that choice, right? You can uh, do cloud only if you want to. You can do prem only with us, or you can do both. And we expect a lot of customers to end up in that third bucket in that sort of hybrid scenario um, and, and let them choose uh, why they do it and, and use that combination. The great thing is when you go to Cohesity Helios, that's going to be the, the control center, if you will, for both things on-prem and also in this new DMAS offering in the cloud. So one experience from a manageability standpoint. That, that's just the only thing I'd add to Sabina's answer about you know, what's great about this and why you want to do more than just one thing. Well, if you sort of solve this problem of infrastructure silos and, and in, in your traditional data center, and now you're bringing it in the cloud, why, why recreate silos of best of breed things all over again? Don't you want to consolidate some of that for ease of use and lower cost of ownership as well? And so that's one of the things we think we're going to bring to the table that's pretty unique uh, versus letting customers pick and choose, you know, five or 10 different solutions and, you know, trying to munge those together. Uh, we think we've got a better way. Got it. Sabine, let's come back to some of the comments you were making about added value. So what can customers really do with their data, with, 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 with data management as a service and AWS that maybe they, they couldn't do before? Yes, yeah, so the way I look at it, you know, Cohesity and AWS are custodians of this data, right? On behalf of the customer, ultimately it is their data, but we want to unlock the value from this data versus having it being in different silos, different locations and so on. So the vision that we have, uh, which we are on the road right now in terms of unlocking this data, is to really add additional services, maybe compliance as a service, analytics as a service, machine learning as, as, as a service. So let's just kind of walk through these three things, right? So if you think about compliance as a service, right, using Amazon Macy, uh, which uses machine learning to really kind of discover, classify, and protect sensitive data, and if you think about analytics as a service, right, using AWS Glue to run ETL on this data, Amazon Athena to run SQL queries, and then potentially create data warehouse using Amazon Redshift. And then if you really start thinking about other machine learning services, right, across the uh, AWS machine learning stack, if you look at it at a high level, you could Customers could use Amazon Textract, Amazon Transcribe to extract value from the metadata to a, to a lot deeper business specific con, uh, content, right? That they need for their different solutions that they have to end customers. For example, another vertical use case could be Amazon Comprehend Medical, using that to kind of distract, extract um, medical information from this data. And then finally, Customers can also use Amazon SageMaker to build advanced machine learning models to really start uh, deriving even additional value and gain business insights from this data. So those are kind of the things we have um, in on our mind in terms of compliance as a service, machine learning as a service, uh, analytics as a service. And then, of course, I want to bring in Chris here to talk a little bit about what they plan to do with their marketplace, with the Cohesity marketplace. 
Yeah, no, I think I think it's a great segue. So we've always had this concept uh, at Cohesity, Dave, of being able to do more with your data. And you've seen that expressed so far in our marketplace, which is still going to be there. We just think plugging some of the additional services that Sabina mentioned, when you have a center of gravity for your data in the cloud, is going to make that concept even more powerful. And so, you know, day one, when we GA this, uh, just for right now, actually, during reInvent, um, you're going to be able to do it yourself. You'll have data backed up into the cloud, for example. You can apply those services if you have the skills to do that. But over time, working in conjunction with Amazon, the goal is to be able to make those services something that you would just go in again to Helios and say, for example, turn on the compliance service. And behind the scenes, we're invoking Amazon Macy, doing all right thing with all the data under management by Cohesity already. And so you just get then the report back out if that's what you, you're aiming to do. And so we're going to try and make this as simple and easy to use as possible leveraging the power of all the great things that Amazon does through the API that they have combined with what we do in, in an uh, engineering effort that we'll be driving with our guidance um, to really give uh, great value add to customers far beyond you know, the insurance policy you get with backup and being able to do more with that data and, and add value to your organization. And, and okay, so, so you've announced uh, at reInvent GA of Cohesity Data Protect, uh, how should customers think about getting started? Well, they can get started today um, since we're, we're now GA. Uh, and just go to www.coecity.com and I have the ability to go ahead there and, and actually uh, join in on a free trial to get started. And if they decide to convert, then then they can go from there. So um, risk-free, go on in, check it out. Uh, we, we welcome feedback uh, as always from our customers. And then stay tuned because right around the corner after we're done with that one offer as part of the bigger DMAS umbrella, you'll see disaster recovery and additional services, really the whole value of the Cohesity platform over time delivered through AWS. As a service, bring it on guys. Sabina, Chris, thanks so much. Really appreciate you coming on. And thank you for watching everyone. Keep it right there. We're digging deep into AWS and the reInvent ecosystem. You're watching theCUBE.